Hello everyone, this is Daniel with FitnessBlender.com and today I'm going to be taking you through a hit and core routine that should leave you nice and tired. So this is predominantly core focused. We've only got about 8-10 uh, minutes of hit, and then the rest of it is going to be all just brutalizing those core muscles, abs, obliques, and lower back. Um, so this one's a little bit special too because I've actually combined two of our older uh, routines together for this one. Uh, the hit portion is actually my first hit routine ever, and the core portion is actually one of Kelly's very first core routines ever. So uh, I've actually linked to the original videos in the description below if you want to go take those, uh, take a look at those and see uh, uh, how far we've come from our old video standards to now. Uh, but otherwise, uh, this routine doesn't need any equipment whatsoever uh, other than an optional um, exercise mat if you're going to be doing this on a hard surface. If you're doing it on a soft surface, you might not even need an exercise mat. Um, you have your warmth and your cool down included. So everything is right here for you. So let's go ahead and get started with our warm up. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and get started with our warm up here. If you've been sedentary for a really long time, you might need a little extra than just this five minutes. Uh, if you've been moving around a little bit, this five minutes should be pretty good. We're starting off with a side step arm cross. Just nice and slow, step back and forth, bringing those arms across your chest. The point is to try to get as much range of motion through those arms as you can, not just to swing them around. So keep those muscles contracted. Try to really stretch them across in front of yourself as well as stretching them back behind yourself as you step. So if you're a little bit tight, you might want to limit that range of motion just a little bit and then kind of push into it more and more and more as you start warming up. And it goes for all these exercises. All right, we're doing a standing side crunch rocker. So uh, hands by your sides, crunch up, and same thing on the other side. Try to get, as, again, as much range of motion as you can, pulling that knee up nice and high to the side, tipping that shoulder down towards that hip. Keep those core muscles nice and tight. We'll be doing a straight leg deadlift next. So feet just about shoulder width apart. Back nice and flat, tipping straight only from that hip. As far forward as you can, almost like a straight leg uh, a toe touch. You're trying to stretch out the hamstring just a little bit. And then right back up again if you want to. You can make it more difficult by hands behind your head or full extension those arms just to make that leverage a little bit harder. Main thing is just trying to get as much range of motion through that hip as you can. All right, we're doing straight leg, uh, sorry, uh, toe touch sweeps next. So down off to one side, sweep across, up, a little bit of a backward lean, back down again, and lean. So you're trying to get a little extra range of motion with that lean, but also as you go down to touch those toes. So stretching down towards those toes, try to get as low to the ground as is comfortable for your back and hips, and hamstring for that matter. All right, we're doing squatting push pulls next. So uh, feet just about shoulder width apart. You're gonna squat down, press forward away from you, grab an imaginary bar, pull it back as you stand back up. So press out, pull in. Really working against yourself with that upper body. Focus on that clean form for your squat. You want those shins and that chest at the same angle. Try not to go down far enough that you get a little bit of a round in your back. You want to keep that back nice and flat. All right, we're doing a high knee march next. So nice and simple. Just bring that knee up as high as you can every single step. Keep it slow at first. Once you feel you have that movement down and you're not feeling any kind of discomfort with it, you can start speeding up a little bit more if you want to. But again, main thing, try to get that knee as high as you can with each one of these steps, but don't roll yourself over to, to meet it. All right, chest arm stretch here. So uh, we're going to be moving forward. Round those shoulders forward like you're hugging a tree. Really round that back out, cross those shoulder blades. Step back. Stretch those arms back behind you. Come back to the center. Then do the same thing on the other, other leg forward. Stretch again. Stretch it back. Same thing on the other side. Stretch it forward. Stretch it back. Try to get one more on the other side here. Stretch it forward. 
Stretch it back going into boxer shuffle next. So up on those toes. If you want to cut the impact out of it, basically you're just kind of uh, balancing back and forth between the ball of, uh, of each foot. If you want to, you can actually uh, jump off the ground ever so slightly. This is just to try to warm up those ankles. Uh, so you don't need to do anything really crazy here. Just keep those lungs open. We're moving to an up and out next. So one leg at a time, come up and over like you're trying to step over something that's uh, beside you. Try to keep those hips facing straight forward. Again, if you want to cut the uh, impact out of it, you can just do it from a step rather than from a hop. Hop just adds a little extra work and warms those ankles up a little bit more. The up and out jacks are next, so a ventral uh, jumping jack and then a traditional jumping jack. Keep that shoulder rigid. Don't let your arms just flop around. Don't do a heavy bend in your elbow. You want that elbow almost perfectly straight. Shoulder constantly contracted. Again, as you feel comfortable, you can always speed that motion up a little bit. And let it relax. All right, take a nice deep breath. Let's get ready to come back in and start with that hit routine. All right, everyone, we have eight different exercises to go through. We're gonna be doing each one of these in an ABAB pattern, so two exercises at a time as we go through. And I'll give you a little bit of a heads up halfway through in case you wanna take a little extra break. Starting off with mountain climbers down on the ground. Get those feet going nice and quick. For the low impact version, it's just gonna be nice, slow steps forward and back. Just mainly keeping those hips nice and low either way. Whatever version you want to do, we're going to be doing these two times each. All right, moving to a twist hop. So your feet are going to go one way, chest is going to go another. So just nice and slow. Basically kind of like you're going down moguls if you've ever been a skier. And the lower you want to go with that squat, the harder this is going to get. So it's up to you as how difficult you want it to be. If you want it to not be low, or you want it to be more in low impact, you can just twist left to right, just working on those core muscles. All right, one more time through of each of those, starting back with a mountain climber. So again, low impact version is here. High impact, slightly harder version is right here. If you really want to make it difficult, don't let that foot touch as you tuck it up underneath. All right, give a second of a rest. Go to those twist hops again. Again, high impact or impact version here. Low impact version is basically just move your feet and then twist your torso in the opposite direction from your hips. Let it relax, going on to our next two exercises, burpees and squat jacks. So, burpees first, down and out, add a jump for the hardest version. Otherwise, just coming up to a standing position. For the low impact, it's gonna be down, step out, step in and up. Just make sure you're alternating which foot you step with every single time, but do the hardest version you can. All right, another little break. Squat jacks next. Recover as best you can in between. Down nice and low. Feet go in and out. Just trying to stay nice and low the entire time. Low impact is just gonna be here. Stepping out one foot at a time. Or you can do a step out and in, whichever's more comfortable to you. All right, back to our burpees for that second round. Recover as best you can. Remember, hardest version that you can control comfortably. If that's the nice, slow, 
controlled movement, that's fine. If that's the harder version, we're doing nice quick hops or adding jumps, go for it. All right, one more of that squat jack. Again, recover as best you can. Nice little squat, quick little hops for that squat jack. Again, low impact is going to be here, still staying nice and low. And let it relax. All right, two new exercises. We've got a jackknife crunch, so go ahead and lay down on the ground. And a back bow crossover. Jackknife crunch is full extension. Up, touch those toes, back down. If you can't get to those toes, that's fine. You're just going up as high as you can, as high as is comfortable. Don't let those hands and feet touch the ground at the bottom. Try to keep them hovering. If you don't quite have the strength for it, feel free to bend your knees slightly. All right, let that relax over onto your stomach for that back bow crossover. So start on one side, lift up and over like there's an invisible wall in front of you that you need to get your hands over top of. Try to move your arms and legs together so they both go to the left, both go to the right. All right, back to that jackknife crunch, flat on your back. Start it up, crunch up to those toes, back out flat. Remember you can bend those knees to make it a little bit easier for those hip flexors if they're struggling a little bit. Main thing though is keeping that lower back flat on that mat. Don't let that lower back lift up. All right, one more uh, back bow crossover. Onto that stomach, hands out. Up and over to the right, up and over to the left. Just imagine, like I said, there's a little imaginary wall in front of you and underneath those feet that you're trying to get your arms and legs up and over top of. And let that relax. All right, two more exercises. We've got wide push-ups and a plank jack. So still on the ground here. Hands nice and wide out from those shoulders. Down for that push-up, back up. You can do it off of those toes or for the slightly easier version, off of those knees. But you want those hands outside of shoulder width as much as you can control. Relax, all right, plank jacks are next. So staying in that same push-up position, you can do these off your elbows or off your hands, whichever is more comfortable for you. Just hop those feet in and out. For the low impact version, it's just step out, step in. Just make sure you're starting that movement with an opposite leg each time. Back to that wide push-up. I'm trying to move around where I don't need to. All right, arms nice and wide. You got those toes or those knees. Full push-up as best you can. Keep those lungs open, no holding your breath. Let yourself relax for just a second. Going back into those plank jacks. So find that position, either elbows or hands. Hop it for that full jack or the slower version. Whichever one you want to do is our last exercise. And let it relax. All right. Deep breath. Go grab a drink of water real quick. And we'll be back to start in to the core section. I'll see you in just a second.
All right, everybody, we have eight different exercises to go through on this one. Each one is going to be done for 45 seconds on with a 15 second break. And we're doing this whole thing through three times. So starting off with a Pilates leg pull. Oops, sorry, over on your stomach. <laughs> nice and slow, lift one leg up and then the opposite leg. So keep that back nice and flat. No doing a cat cow kind of movement. We're just going to do as tight of a squeeze that glute as you can without letting that belly drop. Tight, tight squeeze at the top. You have to make this one work for you. You can't just use uh, gravity to make this one difficult. You've got to really work against yourself with that hip flexor to try to pull that leg back. All right, let that relax. We're moving on to a reclined oblique twist, or crunch, I should say. So, legs out, propping yourself up on those elbows slightly. We're going to crunch forward and across, and then switch sides. Crunch forward and across. So the goal is to try to pull those shoulders down towards those hips especially left shoulder to right hip and right shoulder to left hip. Just alternate back and forth. Nice tight squeeze. Don't worry, these exercises are going to get harder here pretty quick. All right, plank to push up is our next one. So go ahead and come up on to those uh, toes and elbows or toes and knees. Or sorry, toes and elbows or knees and elbows. Get that right. All right, so we're holding right here. You're going to come up into a push-up, right back down again, switch arms, and right back down again. Again, you can do this off of your toes like I'm showing right now, or you can drop down onto those knees. Do the same movement. Just make sure that you're starting that movement with a different hand each time. for just a second we're moving to a uh, toe touch crunch so on your back toes up in the air and just crunch up towards those toes as high as you can you can always make this exercise or any of these exercises a little bit more difficult by holding a weight or changing your leverage whichever makes sense so actually making this more difficult is doing a crunch from here. Same movement on your body, but adds that extra weight of your arms to try to have to lift. Those abs are gonna start burning like crazy here pretty soon. Let that relax. 15 seconds till we start our next one, which is going to be a scissor crunch. So, similar to a, a jackknife crunch, just one leg at a time, basically, and one arm at a time. So full extension, one arm, one leg, opposite arm from leg, and you're just going to go across. Keep that lower back pressed into the mat, trying to let it lift up. If you have just abs of steel here, you can actually do this by not letting your arms or feet touch the ground. Keep them hovering constantly, and it will give you a new definition of the word muscle burn. All right. Doing Pilates tabletop next. So let, these, let those legs relax for a second. 
Go ahead and bring those feet in. We're going to bring them up to tabletop here in just a moment. A moment. So knee should be directly above that hip. Uh, ankle should be directly out from that knee. So both those knees come up, freeze them right here. Lower back pressed into that mat, one leg at a time. Tap the ground, back up. Tap the ground, back up. Check those abdominal muscles, make sure they're tight. Make sure you've, you're pushing weight into that lower back. This movement is gonna kind of constantly try to tilt your hips away from you. And by doing so, lift your lower back up off the ground. That's just those muscles, those abdominal muscles fatiguing on you and giving out. So if you need to, give yourself a little bit of a pause to break, either hug those knees into your chest or do the easier version of tabletop from the ground so you have more of a break. Otherwise, hardest version is right here. Keep them directly above those hips. All right, let those drop for a second. We've got flutter kicks next. Like I said, we're gonna be brutalizing those abs today. So, one leg out, other leg's gonna come straight up and flutter them back and forth. So, a nice full range of motion. Don't put those hands underneath your butt. That's just cheating. You wanna keep those abdominal muscles contracted, lower back pressed into the mat. If you're starting to feel uh, space open up underneath your lower back, just do this with a bent knee to try to make it a little bit easier for yourself or hug those knees into your chest. Give those abdominal muscles a little bit of a break. Reset that lower back and then start right back in. Go for as long as you can until that lower back starts to lift again. You can also speed this movement up if you want to make it a little bit harder. It's all up to you as how difficult this is going to be. Give yourself a little bit of rest here. All right, Russian twist is our last one. So feet uh, out away from you just a little bit, about a 90 degree bend on that knee or a little less. Back flat, you're gonna be rotating left to right. So this is our last exercise before we start over. If those abs are just killing you, feel free to hit pause at the end of this exercise. Give yourself a little bit of extra break and then start back in again. If you're glutton for punishment like me, we're just going to go right back into it. Remember, keep that back nice and flat. Those arms directly in front of that chest, no swinging your arms. All that movement's just coming from your torso. Probably gonna be switching to the easier versions of a lot of these exercises. Whew. All right, let it relax. We are starting over. Pause or go with me again for round number two, starting back over with the Pilates leg pulls facing down. All right, one leg at a time, squeeze it up nice and tight. You can sit back in those heels or sit back in those hips just a little bit to give those hip flexors a break. If you want those abs and those hip flexors to have to work more, then you're gonna lean forward just a little bit so that knee is actually out underneath, from underneath that hip. But whichever version is comfortable for you. Just alternate back and forth, keep those hips squared to the ground. Keep that lower back neutral, no letting it swoop down or arch up. All right, let's all relax. Again, we're doing a reclined oblique twist crunch on those elbows. And crunch across and across. You can cut that leg out of it. If you want to make it a little bit easier, add that leg back in. If you want to make it a little bit harder, it's up to you. Focus on that form, lungs open, no holding your breath. 
All right, moving on to a push-up to plank, a plank to push-up, I mean. Again, either onto those knees or those toes, whichever is more comfortable for you. Whichever one you can handle. So up, down, switch hands. Getting that brain to start function for me so I know what I'm doing. Try to keep those shoulders as square as you can, controlling those core muscles to keep yourself from rotating those hips. Again, easier versions off of those knees. Try to keep a straight line from knee or shoulder to knee or shoulder to ankle. Relax, we're moving on to a toe touch crunch. All right, laying flat on your back, toes straight up in the air. Crunch it up. Try to keep a little bit of tension all the time. No letting it completely relax down. Again, like I said last time, if you want to make this a little bit harder, bring those hands back behind your head or fully extend it over top of your head and you'll feel the difference instantly jump in. Those legs don't have to be perfectly straight. You just want them kind of above those hips. We're going to that scissored crunch next. So similar to that toe touch crunch, we're just getting a little extra mo uh, movement in there through those legs. One leg out. All right, crunch. And off to the other side. If your abs are giving out, feel free to let them Rest on the bottom each time, only if you have to. As I'm having to do now, my abs are toast already. That harder version, like I said, is if you want to hover the entire time. Makes it vastly more difficult, and I am not doing that. <laughs> get that crunch, get that shoulder, that opposite shoulder to hip. Let that relax. All right, Pilates tabletop is next. Let those abdominal muscles release a little bit. Press that lower back into the mat. Easier version is starting with those knees at a 90 degree angle, feet on the ground. And you're going to bring those knees one at a time up to tabletop, just alternating back and forth. So that's easy, level one. Moderate level two is up to tabletop, back down. Just make sure you're alternating which leg you start with each time. Most difficult is freeze at that tabletop and then just drop from there. So pick which version you want to do, whichever one you can control. Remember, the goal here is to keep that lower back on that mat. So if that lower back is starting to lift up, hug those knees into your chest, give yourself a break, reset that lower back, and start again. All right, let it relax. We got flutter kicks next. Hands down by your sides. One leg out. Uh, the leg's gonna come straight up over top of that hip, keeping that lower back pressed into that mat. And just alternate those legs back and forth. Again, the speed that you wanna use is up to you. Some people find moving faster is a little more difficult. Some people actually find it a little easier. Otherwise, or either way, just find the one that feels comfortable to you, that challenges you the most, and do that one. As long as you can keep that lower back plastered against that mat. Again, if you need an extra break, you can give a split second pause at the bottom, letting that foot drop. But otherwise, full range of motion, full movement, as best you can.
Wow, let that relax. All right, we got Russian twist next. So up on that tailbone. Whoo, all right. This is our last exercise of uh, round number two. We still have one more round to go through though. All right, Russian twist, flatten that back, lean back, arms straight up in front of that chest, rotating left to right as far as you can go without letting that lower back round. Try to keep those knees straight out from those hips, try not to let them kick out to the sides. Again, this is your last exercise of the round. So if you need to take an extra break here, when this exercise is done in the next 15 seconds or so, you can go ahead and hit pause, take that little extra break. Otherwise, you can come along with me and just go right in to number three and really kill those abs. Okay, pause or just let it keep going. Follow me along. All right, we're going back to Pilates leg pulls. So down, facing down towards the ground. Easier version is those knees directly underneath those hips. Harder version is out just a smidge. I'm going for the easier one. You're just gonna do a tight leg raise squeeze. Nice pull. So you lift that leg up, but again, don't let your lower back round or swoop. It's a tight ski squeeze without compromising that lower back. So if you need to watch yourself in a mirror or videotape yourself doing this so you know that you're doing it right, that you're, the um, sensory perception you're getting from your body, where your body is telling you where you are in space is actually correct. Because a lot of times it's not. So squeeze it back, keep that back flat, lift that leg as high as you can without dipping those hips. All right, let that relax. We're doing the reclined oblique twist next. I think on the third time I'd start remembering what we're doing, but I think my brain's actually getting worse. All right, reclined oblique twist. Crunching across, shoulder down to hip as you squeeze. Again, if you want to make it more difficult, you can add a little leg raise in with it, but that is completely up to you as to how much effort you want to put into this. I don't know about you, but I'm sweating like crazy today. This must be a pretty difficult routine then. All right, let that relax. We're doing a plank to push up. Get ready on those elbows and knees or elbows and toes. Coming up, back down, switch which hand you start with. Focus on that form, keep those hips in a straight line from shoulder to ankle as best you can. Pretty sure I've been kicking my hips up too high. Again, easier version is off of those knees. Let that relax. All right, we're doing uh, toe touch crunch next. On your back, toes in the air. Start it up, crunch up towards those toes. Those legs are getting too tired, you can always go from bent knee, but try to keep those legs extended as long as you can. Again, if you have anything left, this is too easy. Go from hands behind head or full extension. If you're a real glutton for punishment. Got scissored crunches coming up next. Whew, 
let that relax. <sighs> Apparently trash trucks are coming by now. <sighs> the last few were jeans have been plagued by all kinds of noises outside. All right, <sighs> scissor crunch. So arms up, one leg comes up, opposite arm goes, Just alternate back and forth again. Watch that lower back, make sure that lower back is staying flat against that mat. If you wanna make this very, very difficult for yourself, keep those feet hovering off the ground. I do not have enough left in the tank for that personally. But if you do, man, you're doing better than I am. All right, again, keep checking that lower back. Never ever go to the harder version if you can't keep your back flat against that mat. All right, let it relax. Uh, it was scissor crunch. We got Pilates tabletop next. We are so close to being done here, guys. Whew. All right, up to the full tabletop, one foot at a time for the hardest version. Just back and forth, light little tap, and then back up to that tabletop. Don't let that knee come in past that hip joint. If you want the slightly easier version, it's going to be down and up. Just make sure you alternate which leg you're starting with. Or if you want the easiest version, it's going to be up and directly back down. Again, pick whichever version you can control. As long as you can keep that lower back flat against that mat while you're doing this and keep that hip outside or that knee outside that hip joint, you got it. All right, let it relax. We've got flutter kicks next. Second to last here, everyone. One leg out, other leg up, and start it. 45 seconds. Keep this motion going. Again, if those legs are giving out to you, if that lower back is lifting up, go ahead and bend those knees. Make it a little easier for yourself, but there's really not a ton you can do here to make it easy. Just again, don't put those hands underneath your butt. You're just cheating. It'd be better to take a break than to stick your hands underneath and prop up and assist those abs holding those hips in place. Whoo! That break for a second, that is some burning. All right, keep it going. If you start giving out, just give yourself a short little break, couple seconds, right back into it. Okay, one more exercise, and that is going to be our Russian twist. Okay, nice big deep breath. Back flat, feet out in front of you, arms in front of your chest. Lean back as far as you can control without letting that lower back round, and twist left to right as far as you can control. Those hands should stay directly in front of the center of your chest the entire time. All of that movement just coming from your torso. This is our last exercise, last set of our last exercise, which means we're gonna get a nice little water break after this before we start into our cool down stretch. So push through as hard as you can. You've got a little break coming up. Hardest version you can go, just a couple more seconds. Yeah, oh man, that is a good burn. All right. Take a second for yourself, get a drink of water. We'll be right back to start into our cool down and stretch. See you in just a second. All right, everyone, all we have is our stretch cool down left. We're doing each one of these for 30 seconds apiece, starting off with a side oblique stretch. So let's do your left side first. Step your left foot back behind you, and then reach across your left hand over to the right side of your body. So you should get a nice long stretch to the outside of your uh, oblique rib cage, maybe even the outside of your arm. 
should even uh, possibly feel it into the outside of your like IT band, outside of hip. So just stretch into it as deeply as you can. Nice big deep breaths. No holding your breath here. Same thing on the other side. Relax. Right foot comes back behind you. Right hand reaches over top of your head to the left. And then stretch across that right side again. Arm, rib cage, oblique, even to the outside of your hip and leg. Nice full deep breaths. Doing a quad stretch next. So find a wall or a piece of furniture that you can lean against if you need help with balance. Otherwise, heel to butt. Squeeze it in towards your butt as close as comfortable for your knee. Then pull your knee back behind you till you feel it jump into that quadricep. Just make sure you're keeping your torso straight up and down. Nice deep breaths. Same thing on the other side. Bring that heel to butt as close as is comfortable for that knee. Then pull that thigh and knee back behind you. So you keep that torso straight up and down. Ooh, losing my balance here. All right, going to a toe touch next. Just feet shoulder width apart, straight down towards those toes, round that back. Go down as low as is comfortable. Just make sure you're keeping those legs nice and straight. No bending your knees to get to the ground. You want those legs out straight. And hold yourself at your shins, at your ankles, at your toes, all the way to the ground if you have the flexibility for it. All right, I'm going to sit down. We're going to get those hamstrings a little bit more. One leg out to the side. Reach down towards that toe. Stretch over top. And get that hamstring as well as Getting into those obliques again, because I know we tacked those muscles quite a bit today. Gonna switch sides. We're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. So swap that other leg over there. Reach down towards that toe as far as you can. If you can't get the toe, that's fine. And stretch over top. Hamstring as well as that torso again. We've got cobra stretch coming up next in a few seconds here. Let that relax. Flop over onto your stomach. Press into the palm of your hand with your hands next to your rib cage. Up as high as is comfortable on that lower back. If you can, lock those elbows out, press those shoulders down away from those ears, push that chin up towards the ceiling. Get a nice stretch through those abdominal muscles as well as the front of that neck. All right, we're going to a shell and child's pose. So tuck those knees up underneath you, stretch those hands out away from you for that child's pose. And slowly walk those hands in, round that back up. Pull those shoulders down to those hips, really stretch that lower back. Let that relax. All right, one more on your back, full body stretch. So laying flat on your back, hands above your head, feet out. Take a deep breath in and simultaneously press those feet in opposite directions, arching that back up really nice and high. Exhale, let it relax. Again, deep breath in, press it out, arch up. Exhale, let it relax. All right, everyone, that is the end of our cool down and stretch, which means this workout is complete. 
Hope you guys liked it. If you want to see any more uh, redos of some of our older uh, exercises and different combinations, uh, by all means, let us know in the comment section below. Let us know what you thought about the workout in general. Otherwise, we'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.